guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before so today we're gonna be talking about descendants and that's why i'm wearing this fit we're gonna be talking about the first movie i'm kind of giving mall in the second movie though today so we got all the way to be w-i-c-k-e-d that's also from the second movie <laughs> The first movie is actually pretty good like for a Disney movie like Disney Channel original movie like what was the budget? It's like Kirsten Chenoweth. She's Maleficent in this and like she's not in any of the other movies So you can tell like they had a higher budget in this first movie It literally starts with an iPad showing like the freaking castle Ben's one of the main characters and his parents are Beauty and the Beast They became the kings of like the United Kingdoms of Ardon. Is that it? I don't know. It's very confusing like I don't really get the lore of this and i'm pretty sure descendants is like a ripoff of ever after high like is it not i really remember watching ever after high when i was growing up and that was like one of my favorite shows like it was like monster high and then when ever after high came out i was like oh my god and then it was canceled i think and like descendants freaking happened so there's this thing called the isle of the lost where all the villains were because all these disney villain characters they're not existing in the same time, but like they are in the world of Descendants, so pop off. Beauty and the Beast, like it's literally during the plague in France, is it not? Plague. And so for some reason, they decide that their 16, is it 16, 16 or 17 year old son should become the freaking king? Okay, pop off, like, and they don't seem like the happiest with it either. I've decided that the children on the Isle of the Lost be given a chance to live here in Oridon. <laughs> I really like the mom. She's a fairy godmother and once upon a time so I was like, Disney recognized real and was like, come here. But Ben's dad, I'm like, who are you? You're so weird. You're so sketchy. Like, is that really the beast? And then we cut to the aisle where they're performing Rhyme to the Core, which is literally like a dubstep, like, <laughs> dance. <laughs> And then Maul steals candy from a baby. And then we meet their parents, Kirsten Chinoweth. Stealing candy, ma. So disappointed. It was from a baby. But like, I also want to take a moment to say Cameron Boys, he's the one who plays Carlos. He's one of the main four kids. He passed away, unfortunately, in 2019. It was so sad. I followed his career for a long time, like obviously in Disney Channel growing up. Really, rest in peace, Cameron Boys. He was a great actor. Yeah, I think they're making a fourth Descendants movie. And obviously his character won't be around anymore, but I hope they do like some tribute to him or something. And he is the son of Cruella the Bill, actually. And he's super scared of dogs. And then there's Evie, the evil queen's daughter. I mean, she's kind of like a simp in this movie and down bad. And I'm like, what are you doing right now? Anyways, Maleficent tells them that they have to steal the fairy godmother's wand and basically free them from the aisle and take over because she's evil. <laughs> Maul's like, mm, yes, because she craves her mother's validation. They get to Oridon and they're greeted at the school with like the whole freaking band's there and the prince and his girlfriend and the fair godmother. She's so dramatic. Like I love the actress. Like <laughs> looks like having a lot of fun. She's just doing the most and <laughs> it's on a whole different like level in energy than everyone else. Like she literally is just acting like a fairy tale character right out of the freaking cartoon and i honestly i love it for it because it's really fun bibbidi babbidi wow and so ben he's dating this girl named audrey and she's such a total freaking weirdo like i don't even know what to say she's freaking aurora's daughter but she's like super shady and bitchy to mall <laughs> hey you're a maleficent's daughter aren't you yeah, you know what? I totally do not blame you for your mother trying to kill my parents and stuff. But Ben's like, oh yeah, welcome here. And then this guy, he's in the band. He's one of the seven dwarfs sons, I think. Yeah, and he shows them around and shows them to the rooms. I don't know, he's like into Evie. So they get to the rooms and like the girls room is super frilly and like pink and princessy like. And Mal's like, what the fuck? And Evie, you can tell right away she's so into it. But like, she kind of pretends she's not. I feel like I really like growing up. I was like a little bit of like I'm not like those other girls type of girl. Like I really hit on Justin Bieber. So Evie, her mom had given her this little compact magic mirror, and they use it to find where the wand is, and it's in this museum. So they go and break into there, and like they make the guard fall asleep. It's like so easy for them to like get into the place with like no one really noticing. And it's like, what is going on? <laughs> like, your security is so bad for like these really dangerous artifacts. I'm surprised no one has stolen before. There's like this area with like villain statues. And so the mom's statue comes to life. And Maul and her mom just start doing this music number about like, don't you want to be evil like me? And it's like, wow, yeah, sure. So they try to steal the magic wand and 
the security alarm ends up going off so it doesn't work and they have to go back to the rooms because they're gonna get in trouble obviously they're gonna get kicked out back to the aisle if it's found out that they're trying to steal that magic wand they end up having to go to class and they have this special class because like no one in the school trusts them they think they're all evil what did they do to be in the aisle be born have parents that were evil like that's really fucked up at the end of the day that like they're being kept there like ben's parents beating the bees you're not good people i do like Ben. that's why i like Ben because it's like he is a little bit of a wet blanket sometimes but i'm like wow social justice word to the max for real with him <laughs> class with the fairy godmother and they have to answer these like multiple choice questions all the answers except like the one that's correct obviously are very clearly evil and like <laughs> mal's the only one like she's so good at pretending like <laughs> i'm a good girl see si, give it a bottle correct she's not evil she's not right into the cool core and then there's this like tourney game i think it's called tourney jay is like trying out for the team i think carlos tried out too also aubrey's the cheerleader and she's side-eyeing everyone because prejudice can't stop her like a lot of parts of this movie are like a little like ooh, like disney doesn't normally do this like this is kind of interesting but the freaking mean girl character here this like the biggest like most generic stereotype of mean girl i ever saw in my life i'm like what is wrong with you but she won't give up she won't give up even after the tourney's over her and there's this guy i haven't mentioned him yet his name's chad i think he's cinderella's son he's such a freaking weirdo honestly to me like this might be like one of the weirdest characters in the disney channel original movie in all the movies like he's never like a normal person or i don't think has any redeeming qualities to him he's just like a freaking creep the whole time and audrey's obviously just jealous honestly <laughs> of mall because i mean she also her mom did like do really bad things to her family but like it's her mom at the end of the day like she hasn't done anything to you so she's being like mm, betty boo you're too trusting her mom is evil so she's evil but ben goes up to her and mall she already graffitied her locker and honestly it does kind of look really badass and like she maxed out in charisma like her acting skills through the roof ben I don't know if he's just like naive or what is going on but like he's already like into her i think i think that's what it is that ben was just like looking at pictures of the freaking aisle kids one day or like looking at the surveillance they have of the aisle and saw mal and fell in love and was like she's prettier than my girlfriend and that's the real reason he brought the aisle kids over because he's so obsessed with mal like from the beginning he's just like into her look at that story he's giving and tell me he's not into her please then Maul meets in the bathroom with Jane. Yeah, it's Jane. She is the fairy godmother's daughter. And her hair, it honestly doesn't look that bad, but like, it doesn't look that great either. So Maul, she is our toxic queen and she susses her insecurities out and uses them against her to basically like get info and try and get like the fairy godmother's wand. But like, she's like, mm, my mom's never gonna like use the wand to like fix my defects so since mal has her mom's spell book she's like bibbity bobbity hair it does look way better but like i said i don't think her hair looked even that bad i don't think it makes that big of a difference they're like they're like actors like they're beautiful people so i'm like okay she was ugly before question mark now we get to the true sim bitch why would you ever be like simpy for a guy named chad like no offense if your name is chad but like the dwarf's kid his name's doug i kept forgetting his name so i had to look it up he's like really into evie but like she's just looking at freaking chad chad is just using her because she's smart she's actually smart but like she's smart right now because she's just using her magic mirror to cheat he meets under the bleachers with her and asks her to do his homework okay i guess he's really prejudiced about it but like i just don't understand what the point of this like little art they had evie go on was because it just seems like very confusing and like counteractive in a way anyways then we cut back to the attorney and carlos is like running away from the dog and then becomes friends with the dog it's like it's really like honestly a heartwarming plot line especially if you like dogs so we're in the girl's room and freaking evie's sewing her dress like she is such entrepreneur queen like we love her she's there and she's whining about her mom and then mulan's daughter comes in i don't remember her name oh my god also has a really strange hairstyle on and like hers, I think it was like just a bad wig because it looked way worse than Jane. And so Mal does her little spell and then she's like, oh, I'm a bad girl now and rips her dress. Like, and then Jane does it too. It's so, okay, you guys are bad girls now, even though you're still wearing like these like super frilly ass <laughs> pastel fits. Okay, 
Okay, pop off, I guess. I, I don't know. So they end up finding out that Ben's coronation is going to be soon in, that the one is going to be out there when he does. The only people that are going to be in the front are going to be Ben and his parents and his girlfriend. And so they come up with this plan to basically like give him a love potion and make him fall in love with Maul so they can steal the wand. So what they do is like they use the spell book that she has and they make cookies for Ben, but they need a tear of sadness, like real sadness. And they're like, we're evil, we don't cry. And then Mulan's daughter comes into the kitchen at night, like when they're making the cookies and she's like talking to them and she's like, didn't your mom ever bake you cookies? You know, I thought even villains love their kids. And so <laughs> she cries and they get their tear. So I guess like all good. It was it was kind of like a sad moment. It's like, oh, and they're like, yes, we made her cry. <laughs> I think it's only like one singular cookie because like I'm pretty sure they made enough dough for more. But she has like one singular cookie. And she's like at her locker and she offers it to Ben. I understand. Be careful of treats offered by kids of villains. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm sure every kid in Ardon knows that. <laughs> and so he just takes the cookie right off her and like eats it, and she's like. <laughs> But I don't think she lets him finish it either. If someone did that to me, I would be like, did you just drug me? Like, what? what is in that cookie? And like, I mean, she kind of did. That's like really not good. Like, especially for a kid's movie, like I don't think that's like the right messaging. And that's probably like the thing that aged the worst about this movie. Making someone fall in love with you out of their will, like not great. Anyway, so we go to this tourney game and like the boys are going crazy. I don't really care about the tourney, honestly, but I care what happens after freaking Ben grabs the mic and is like, I love you, Mal. And Audrey's like, what the frickity frick? And like, he hadn't even broken up with her, I don't think, before he does this. And it's just like, Mal, I love you. And he sings this song to you. It's like, and I will give my kingdom for just one kiss. And did I mention that I'm in love with you? And did I mention there's nothing I can do? And did I happen to say I dream of you every day? Now let me sing it out loud if that's okay. I really like the song and the way he's dancing. I think like Ben might not be the greatest dancer, but like I love the way he dances. It's so funny to me. So at the end, he goes up to Mal to ask her to go to the coronation with him. She's like, yeah. And then Audrey's like, oh, she has my boyfriend. Like, girl, no one asked you. No one cares. You're not even like relevant anymore. You're not even the future king's girlfriend anymore. Like, get out, get out. But yeah, it turns out, I think they won the tourney game. Mm, wow, great. Like, I think it's thanks to Jay. Like, wow, Jay's such a badass, wow. Teamwork makes a dream work. And that's his character arc because he was like a thief at the beginning. He's Jafar's son. Did I even mention Jay before? I feel like I completely forgot to mention Jay. Jay's like, kind of like <laughs> the most forgettable character. But I, I still do love Jay and I mean, he was in freaking Twilight, so how can we not love him? He was like a thief and he was painted as very individualistic in the beginning of the movie, so him becoming part of the tourney team and basically leading them to winning the championship after like a long time that they hadn't won. Like, it's pretty good character arc for him in this movie, actually. I do like it, even though like the whole tourney thing, it's just kind of forgettable. <laughs> so after that, we cut to the classroom where Evie and Doug and Chad are and freaking Chad told on her to the teacher that she was using this freaking magic mirror. And so the teacher's like, hmm, no more cheating. Give me that freaking mirror. And she still gets a freaking B plus. So yeah, she is smart. She is the moment. She is the legend. Like, shut up, teacher. He is also prejudiced and thinks that a pretty girl like her can't be smart. Doug is proud of her and they have vibes together. She's like, for the first time, I'm more than a pretty face. Like, ah, you've always been more than a pretty face. Look at the designs you make. Look at you sewing queen. Like, Frank, you would blow RuPaul's Drag Race out of the water. Like, some of those girls there need lessons from Evie. I'm serious. You could put, she could put together a pretty good, like, package, I feel like, for Drag Race. I want to see that, like, the Evie-inspired Drag Race package. <laughs> Please, I need that, guys. Anyway, so then Mal and Ben go on this little date, and it's, like, kind of cute. Like, she has this one song during their date, and it's, like, I don't care. Like, all the other songs in this movie, I'm pretty sure I'm, like, Psh bop bop certified bop the important thing that happens in this date is that they end up by this lake and ben goes swimming in the lake and at one point ma thinks he's drowning so she goes into the lake but she doesn't even know how to swim him and ma are kind of talking there and kind of hinting that he's like love and she's like i don't know what love is he's like mm, 
maybe I can show you. Like Ben coming in with a riz. Okay, Ben. Okay, I didn't know you were like that. But you can tell that Mal's starting to feel guilty about this whole thing because, you know, Ben is a genuinely like super nice person and she's like, what am I doing to him? Like, what am I doing this for my mom who doesn't show me love? And he is. So the one class they all have, and he has two classes, but everyone else just has this one class, I guess, <laughs> um, with the fairy godmother. She's like, oh, we have a little surprise for y'all because like y'all are so Gucci. And it's a FaceTime call with their parents. And I think that's a little bit more of a punishment there, but also Carlos has his puppy that has become his best friend and his mom is not very happy about that. They're starting to regret this whole thing and not really wanting to seal the wand, but they know their parents will be really disappointed if they don't. So it's like live our lives like we are or disappoint our parents. Ooh, it, it's a hard decision. Like that is the real underpinning message of this movie. And I think it's why it resonated with so many people. Following what your parents want to do is like a big thing. And I know High School Musical has that same underlying message, but I think just in this one, movie descendant did it so much better i don't know it's because of the fantastical elements or there's like more pressure to it it feels like so there's actually one song that is more forgettable than the lick song because i completely forgot about it it's a song that mal sings while she's making uh another cookie for ben it's to disenchant him this time from the spell you know she is gonna be sealing the wand but she doesn't want to be as cruel as like oh he's always in love with me when i'm betraying him like that's too much for her like this family day where like all the kids families go and so that's why they kind of had that video chat because their parents obviously can't go because they're in the aisle and they're evil and if they went there they probably would kill all the other parents <laughs> and so then ben introduces mal to his parents and they're like what you're dating her <laughs> really that's great they invite mal to play croquet with them and audrey's there with her grandma out of all these people the only person that like it's kind of justified in how they've been treating badly these people like i get the grandma having that reaction because she was actually affected by it they get exposed for like the spells that she's been doing on the girls to change their hair and all that stuff that's been going on and they're telling ben you cannot trust her she's evil she's evil 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 do you not know that in spanish mall literally means bad so she is she is bad she is rotten to the core but honestly it's on chad like he is being like the creepiest creep ever like this is what i'm saying i hate chad like even beyond aubrey like chad's just a weirdo person and we don't like him in this house and jay is like stepping up to the plate and he starts fighting chad and it just turns into kind of a mess so they leave the family day what they are saying about them is not wrong in a way because they have been plotting against him this whole time so yeah it was rude and it was like very prejudging people but like they also were not wrong in a lot of the things that they were accusing them of <laughs> so ben chases after them and is like everything's gonna be okay with the coronation don't worry blah 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 like people are not gonna stop prejudging them out of nowhere with nothing happening just because you're coronated as king like okay okay audrey and chad have to butt in and like also be like menaces there and mal is justifiably fed up about this whole thing and ends up <laughs> undoing jane's spell on her hair and then it's the coronation coronation day so they're heading to the coronation and of course mal is on this carriage with freaking ben and they're like looking at each other and Ben's so into her. And she's like feeling so guilty and she has the chocolate or whatever that she made Ben to unspell him. And he's like, oh, what is this? He knew all along, like as soon as he went into the lake, he was unspelled. So when he was talking to her about like, oh, I can be the one to show you love, blah, blah, blah. He was actually saying that for real. That's what I'm saying. Like just out of nowhere, like this girl gives you a cookie to make you fall in love with her. And like you basically break up with your girlfriend like that and you're okay with it you're into her you want her to still be your girlfriend and you're in love with her okay you are a sim first of all and like there's something like sus going on here he was into her before like why else why else did he start this program i'm telling you guys and so they go into it's like it looks like a cathedral or a church or something like that and the wand gets stolen of course of course it gets stolen but by who 
Jane, if this is a direct result of Maul pulling at her insecurities with her mom, like helping Cinderella and not helping her. Most of the people watching this movie was gonna be preteen girls, like I'm pretty sure that's the target demographic, so it makes sense to have that storyline. There's this whole shockwave through like the area, and so freaking Maleficent is able to get out, and obviously she's like gunning for the wand. But what do the VKs have to say about this? They like it here. They like Oradon. They like people that are actually nice to them and are not just forcing them to do their own plots to get out of the issues they cause. So like work, party, and be your own people. And Maleficent gets turned into this really small reptile. This is like the most friendship of power Disney Channel shit ever. But, but, we love it. And honestly, it's, it's really cute. <laughs> It obviously has to finish off with a freaking song. Do you guys like this movie? Because to me, it's one of my favorite decoms like of all time. I love this sentence. And I also really like the zombies movie. I only watched the first one of that actually. I know there's like two or three, but actually the zombies movies, I was on their set because they were filmed where I used to go to school, uh, like my old university. And so I do have like a prop from zombies in my house that I got. Um, I can show you guys this is what I got from there and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all my videos You can check the latest video. I uploaded up here and I hope you're having a fantastic day afternoon or night Whatever time it is for you. I love you guys so much Mwah.